I have been using Fedora 37 as a personal gaming system on my external SSD since last year. And it has been working flawlessly ever since the setup. Recently, they released version 38, which includes the brand new GNOME 44. So let's update it and see if it works. I want to test three things in this video. What is the upgrade process looks like? Whether the upgrade breaks any of the games I already installed, and whether the new version improves the performance. So before clicking the update button, I did some benchmarking on my games with version 37. Even though these games are running inside a system from an external SSD, I'm glad to report that the results are very similar compared to the native Nix OS. On Wayland, I got minimum 25.4 FPS maximum 72.75 FPS and average 47.3 on RDR2. This is a little bit better than the results I got on GNOME Wayland on NixOS, which was 25, 87, and 43 respectively. Less volatile than NixOS. On Assassin's Creed Origins, I got 84, 27 overall frames and 72 on average. Same average frame rates but 300 less frames overall, which is not a big gap. I was also able to run Tomb Raider after switching to X11 with maximum 118.6 FPS, 77.8 minimum FPS, and 100 for the average, which is on par with the X11 results on NixOS and better than it was on Tuxedo. In one of my previous videos, People suggested I run benchmark multiple times, so I did this back to back. But in general, the second time scores were always worse than the first, which I think is due to the laptop temperature. So all the scores going forward in this video will use only the first time results, with proper cooldown time in between. Then I started the update, but the main download button automatically stopped itself during the process. I tried it several times with no success, but the software update button below it worked, so I used that instead. After a reboot around 5 minutes, I found out it only updated the software while the system remained as version 37. So I went back to software center again, clicked the main download button, and this time it worked. After the download was finished, I saw a message saying you will upgrade to version 38, and this time it took around 10 minutes overall. After another reboot, I could see the GDM and logged in. It kept my wallpaper unchanged. I can see my Wi-Fi automatically connected, my GNOME Caffeine extension worked properly, and the NVIDIA X setting program was still there, which means the upgrade was able to remember all my settings and kept them. I opened up the bottles and launched Red Dead Redemption 2 right after that. It had no issue running the benchmark. But that was the end of the good news. Because the results were lower than my expectation. It was worse than the X11 results I got on NixOS. I got 74 maximum, 48 average, and minimum 17.8 even though it had pretty good maximum FPS and similar average. The minimum FPS was even lower than the worst result I got on NixOS with Cinnamon. Same with Assassin's Creed. I got 72.37 for the overall frames, 800 down compared to the GNOME 37, and 61 for the average which was even worse than the Cinnamon results. And the Tomb Raider was not even open for me, neither with Wayland nor with X11. But wait! I remember this happened to me two weeks ago when I was recording the Tuxedo OS benchmarks. There must have been tweaks to the performance profile in Fedora 38. I saw the system was set to balance by default, so let me change it to performance and try it again. Now, before we go forward, I want to mention two things. First, I noticed the fan noise was significantly louder after switching. It got much louder when running the benchmark compared to 37. I think it was even louder than Tuxedo's performance mode, 
and the only other times I can remember it being this loud were the times it's running the Prime OS, which is an Android x86 system, Chrome OS Flex, and Endless OS. And I think none of them had NVIDIA drivers installed, but this one does. Alongside the noise, I noticed the laptop is getting hotter, which crippled the performance, especially the Assassin's Creed. On version 38, when the laptop was super hot after running Red Dead Redemption 2, I got 8170 with performance mode for the overall frames, 300 lower than the results on 37 with balance mode. And if I wait for it to cool down, I got 8970. I haven't seen something like this on any other distribution before, so I don't really know how it will perform in the actual gaming situation. My guess is you might get a super smooth gameplay for a couple of minutes, then you will deteriorate over time. But anyways, let me show you all the numbers of all the games I run. And bear in mind, these numbers were produced with proper cooldown time in between. With RDR2, I got 69.7 as the maximum, 22.67 as the minimum, and 47.7 average FPS on Wayland. And on X11, it gave me 79.1 maximum, 21.19 minimum, and 49 on average. Still, Wayland has a slight advantage here. As mentioned above, Assassin's Creed Origins on Wayland gave me 8170 overall frames and 69 on average for the first time. The second time after the laptop cooled down, I reboot the system, but it froze. I had to do it for the third time, which gave me the supreme 8970 overall and 76 average. While on X11, I got 8405 for the overall and 71 for average. Again, X11 score here are very similar to the Wayland score of 37, but this is using performance profile, and that was using balance. And this one had a longer cooling time compared to version 37. Tomb Raider was still not able to launch in either X11 or Wayland. I even did a reinstall of the game, but it still can start. If you have watched this video, I also have It Takes Two installed by Bottles and imported into Steam, which seems to be working well on Fedora 38. Now, is Fedora 38 worth upgrading for gaming? Well, even though the upgrade process was somewhat painless and it showed a less fluctuated score on RDR2, it broke Tomb Raider, generated more heat and noise while gaming and it seems like the results were not that stable either. It is very tempting to stay on the cutting edge versions, especially when using distributions like Fedora or Arch, which have the philosophy of new is always better. And I have one rule, new is always better. But I don't think now is the best time to do so. As on May 6th, the date I recorded this video, only two and a half weeks after the release, two out of the four games I tested had issues. I'm wondering how many more issues will be there for you. So I suggested you wait a bit more before pulling the trigger, and even longer if you need it as a daily driver. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.